Hello, my name is Albert Wanyo. Today, we're going to look at the concept of a discourse community. For us to understand the concept of a discourse community, let us break the term into the two words, a community and then discourse. So let's start with what a community is. What is a community? A community is a group of people with common goals. And the common goals may be norms, values, beliefs, right? So that is what a community is. Now, what is discourse? Discourse refers to written or spoken communication that takes place among a group of people. Now, let us put the two together. We know what discourse is. We know what a community is. What then is a discourse community? The concept of a discourse community was proposed by John Swales. John Swales defines a discourse community as a group of people with common goals who engage in communication to achieve those Goals. So that is what a discourse community is. A group of people, and that group of people have common goals, and they use communication to achieve their goals. Now, let's look at examples of discourse communities. Examples of discourse communities, let's look at them from this point of view. We can look at religious organizations as examples of discourse communities. Then we can also look at the professional associations, the various professions and their groupings as discourse communities. Then the clubs and various societies are also examples of discourse communities. Now let's move on to look at the features or the characteristics of discourse communities. John Swales, in his definition of discourse communities, outlined six defining characteristics of discourse communities. And these six defining characteristics are, one, discourse communities have a common public goal. Two, discourse communities have mechanisms of intercommunication among their members. Three, discourse communities use the mechanisms of intercommunication, the participatory mechanisms that they have to receive feedback from their members. Then, four, discourse communities use one or more genre. Five, discourse communities use specific lexes. And six, a standard of knowledge is usually needed for people to be members of a particular discourse communities. Now, let us look at these six defining characteristics. The first one, a public common goal. What do we mean by a public common goal? When we say discourse communities have public common goal, this refers to a body of knowledge that the members engage in as a practice for the benefit of the society. When we take a group as a discourse community, for example, health professionals. Health professionals have a common goal of promoting health issues and the well-being of the society. Another group, for example, the Bar Association, they have a common goal of promoting legal education. If we take religious groups, 
as examples of discourse communities, you will realize that their common goal is to propagate the doctrines that they have. Great. Now, the second feature of a discourse community that is discourse communities have mechanisms of intercommunication among their members. Discourse communities usually organize meetings, seminars, forum, etc., to share ideas among their members. So these are the mechanisms of or the means by which they interact. The next feature is that discourse communities use the participatory mechanisms that they have to give information to their members and to receive feedback from their members. Then the next feature is that discourse communities use one or more genre. And a genre simply refers to a type or a form of communication. It may be written or spoken. So based on the communicative purpose of a particular interaction, it will have a form or a structure. So every form of communication or type of communication or piece of writing to a large extent tend to have a particular form or a structure. So we say that pieces of writing that have one structure, for example, letters belong to one genre, and another piece of writing that are all essays belong to another genre. Great. So now let's come to how discourse communities use genre in the discharge of their duties or in communicating among their members. If we take, for example, those in the health profession, Health professionals use genres such as diagnostic reports, referral notes, and prescription forms to communicate among themselves or among their members as part of discharging their duties. The next feature is that Discourse communities use specific lenses. And what do we mean by they use specific lenses? It means that discourse communities to a large extent tend to have words or expressions that are peculiar to that discourse community. And the words and expressions that are peculiar to that group is what we are referring to as the specific lenses that discourse communities use. We can have a few examples. For example, when we take legal practitioners, legal practitioners use certain expressions that are peculiar to the legal profession. So they will be talking about uh, somebody has been acquitted and discharged, somebody is an accomplice, uh, etc. So these are expressions that are legal expressions. So they are peculiar to that discourse community. When we take health professionals, for example, they also use expressions that are peculiar to the health professionals. So they will be talking about taking the vitals of a patient or somebody has been diagnosed of thrombosis. And these are health or medical terms that are used among health professionals. So it is peculiar to their practice. And when we come to the academia, then we look at the professors, the lecturers, and the students in the university, you realize that they also have specific lenses. So they'll be talking about course registration, course outline, or credit load within a semester, etc. And these are expressions that are peculiar to the academia or the academic discourse community. Great. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the relevance of the concept of a discourse community to the explanation 
of academic discourse. Now, the university is an example of a discourse community because it has all the features of discourse communities. And the university as a discourse community is what we refer to as the academic discourse community. And in the academic discourse community, the kind of interaction or the kind of communication that goes on in the academic discourse community is what we refer to as academic discourse. So academic discourse refers to all the interactions in the lecture halls, at seminars, and the conferences within the university community. Now, when we take the university as a discourse community, we will also realize that it is one broad discourse community, but it is also made up of smaller discourse communities within it. And the smaller discourse communities within the academic discourse community are the various departments or disciplines. So if we take the various departments or disciplines, for example, if we take the discipline of applied linguistics and those who are offering languages, you realize that they will have specific lexes, for example, we're talking about phonetics, phonology, allophones, etc. And these are expressions that are peculiar to those offering languages and applied linguistics. But when you go to the department of, let's say, political science, for example, you realize that the specific lenses or the expressions that will be peculiar to their discussions will be completely different from those of applied linguistics. So those in political science will be using expressions like governance, separation of powers, the legislature, etc. And these are applicable to all disciplines within the university community. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we have looked at the concept of a discourse community. We discuss the characteristics of discourse communities and we look at examples of discourse communities. And we also use the concept of a discourse community to explain academic discourse. Thank you.